Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. If he, if he died for us, shall he not freely give us all things? That was our down payment of his promise that he will absolutely provide everything we need in life and godliness. And I thank you in the name of Jesus for your word today. It's a powerful tool against the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've not taught on uh, spiritual warfare yet as far as kingdom business goes, and I'm excited about this today because a third of Jesus' ministry was casting out demons. Uh, you know, it's a subject that's very, very volatile uh, because there's so many different views about these things. So I'm going to give what I have had in the experience and the understanding of the word. Not that I have all the revelation in the world on this. Before I get into that, I just want to remind those watching on the Internet and those that will be watching our Kingdom Life University, which, by the way, this class now is an official part of our Kingdom Life University School of uh, Kingdom Business. And uh, go to our blog uh, spot, which is Kingdom Biz Community Blog Spot. You'll get some current posts. I just put them on this week. And some videos. Every Almost every other day I put something on our blog spot. We're just getting a lot of response. I appreciate it. Uh, KBBN Network, for those that uh, are broadcasting with us, we thank you. And those that need to, you want to go check it out. You should be on, uh, on our Kingdom Radio, uh, Kingdom Business Radio, so you get notice. We have a Get Notice campaign. Well, Ephesians 6.12 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. And how many know the, the Christian life is a battle? It's a battle zone. Now, we don't always focus on it that way, and I don't think we should. In fact, I think there are two problems when it comes to spiritual warfare. A good part of the church denies that there's really a problem. They think, uh, they think demons are over in Africa somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? On some foreign field that they hear missionaries talk about the tribal uh, witches and all that kind of thing. And we've kind of abdicated, oftentimes in our churches, any involvement. So we're really not teaching people how to do spiritual warfare oftentimes. We, because we don't even talk about it. We don't even recognize it as a real problem. Uh, and then the other problem is some people get so overboard, they see a demon behind every bush. You know, I, I love deliverance ministries that are biblically centered, that are balanced. I think they're wonderful and I support some. We have some on our broadcast, our network, that are deliverance ministries. But I'll tell you what, uh, oftentimes they're a problem. So some, some ministries see a demon behind every bush. They think everything is being caused by the enemy. And, and really what that does is exalt the enemy's power above what he has. And I think this verse in the Bible that says, give no place to the devil, is oftentimes people are giving a place to the devil by overemphasizing what he's doing. Listen, the devil has no more power than a fly if he can't possess something. He's not equal with God in power. It's not a big contest in heaven on who's going to win. Jesus already won. He's already defeated the last enemy of Satan. Because Satan is what? A murderer, killer, destroyer, liar, deceiver. But one of his works is murdering, is killing. And Jesus already defeated death. That's why I refuse to call death, death when it comes to Christians. We don't die. Because the moment we receive Christ, we're living in an eternal life. And we've already, we're living the victory that Christ has won for us. And so, uh, what we need to do is we need to really study the ministry of Jesus to see how this works in balance. Now, I'm going to read something out of Matthew. I think this is really important. Uh, some of the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus and said, You cast out demons by the power of Satan. And Jesus said, well, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to destruction. Every city or house divided against itself will not stand. So if Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? This is in Matthew 12, by the way, verse 25. And, and, uh, and if Satan, uh, or if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do you and your sons cast them out? <laughs> Undoubtedly, they weren't. Therefore, they shall be your judges. 
But if I cast demons out by the Spirit of God, then has the kingdom of God come upon you. Now Jesus said one of the manifestations of the kingdom of God is power to cast out demons. And I, I believe that, you know, I, I believe we don't have to run around casting demons out of everybody because I believe demons get displaced when something greater comes in. They just leave. Have you ever been in a house where it's really uncomfortable and you just weren't welcome? <laughs> I've been in some places I just said, well, you know, it'd be nice just to exit out here nicely, you know. Because demons will not remain in a house where they're not welcome where they have no authority to exercise their power, they're going to leave. So I believe a lot of people, when they receive Jesus, even though they may have indwelling demons when they get saved, and habits and different things, I believe these demons leave. And it maybe isn't through a deliverance. Now, I believe some people need to be delivered. Some people need to go through a deliverance. Now, I went through a training with uh, Paul and Claire Hollis, which have a ministry here in Tampa, uh, a spiritual warfare ministry. They have a spiritual warfare academy, actually. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they get more aggressive on this. And I believe some people are called to this, and I believe their ministry is in balance. They have a strong ministry of worship, and Paul teaches the word, not just about demons. But they have a spiritual warfare academy. They're psychologists. They're doctors of psychology. Both of them are from an earned secular schools. They tried the clinical approach. It wasn't getting results. So they said there's a better way, and that, the way of that is through the cross of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus. That gets permanent results. And so uh, Jesus said, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, by the Spirit of God, then has this kingdom of God come upon you. So the kingdom of God will get rid of demons. Teaching on the kingdom, which is the rulership and rulership of Christ over us and us living under his authority and his power, that gets rid of demons. So how can a strong man enter a house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man and then he will plunder his house? So uh, Jesus is talking about binding a strong man, about getting rid of the authority that demons have over houses. What's a house? Well, I believe it can be a literal place. It can be a body. You know, demons must, let me say it again, demons must possess something to have authority. Without possessing, they are absolutely powerless. That's why when Jesus cast out the legion of demons to the demoniac on the island, uh, they begged to go into another animal. They really don't care if it's man or a swine. <laughs> they just want some place to manifest themselves. So Jesus sent them off into the swine and they went down into the sea drowned so they're looking for a place to manifest just keep that in mind because later we're going to see how uh, how easy it is to remove them demons are territorial satan is territorial give no place to the devil so let's go on let's look at some of the things here the lord's given us this morning now uh, demons only have the power that we give them so what do they use they use fear they, they observe us. I believe demons sometimes are even assigned to families. I, I can't prove this, but it makes sense that if demons uh, uh, were upon parents, uh, the only proof I had was I was in, in a Spring Hill ministering and a lady came into the service that had been raised in a history of witchcraft. Her mother was a witch and she was a witch. And she'd been raised in it. She'd offered blood to Satan every adult day of her life on an altar in her home. She was committed to Satan in witchcraft. And her husband brought her to the church and said, if you don't get something straightened out in your life, I'm leaving you. So they came to the church service and uh, she had quite a manifestation. It was interesting. The people dealing with her at the end of the service, one real big deacon was trying to hold her down and she was not a large woman, but she was manifesting some pretty wild, crazy things. And this can happen. Not that we ask this to happen every time or it has to happen. If you look at the way Jesus cast out demons, there was a great variety. Sometimes he just commanded spirits to go. Sometimes he commanded them to shut up, to be quiet. Sometimes he commanded them to speak. It says they came out with a loud voice. So, you know, every situation was different. Jesus was led by the Spirit on how to deal with demons. And that's where discerning of spirits comes in. You have to discern how to deal with the situation in people. I was down in San Francisco and uh, Nick was under the uh, uh, 
over covering there, one of the, one of the highway over coverings, and he was sitting under there. And, and I'm telling you, he was so possessed. <laughs> the workers came over to me and said, this guy, man, these voices are speaking out of him all over the place. And, and they're changing their voices, you know, and we're kind of freaked out. We haven't dealt with this before. I said, well, let me go over and talk to him. And so I sat next to him and I said, I asked this question, do you want to be free? I, I asked that because we learned on the streets if people don't want to get set free, don't deal with them. We had one lady, a whole group of us, cast demons out of her, and she got angry with us, went down the street and got more and came back. <laughs> you know? And so I said, Nick, do you want free? He said, yes, I do. So we proceeded and, and uh, cast these demons out of him. I'm going to show you how we did it later. Uh, I don't think there's just one particular technique. I know it works for me, and we're going to explain that at the end. And I believe it works for people and buildings the same way. They only have power to manifest in the natural world by possession. I believe I've emphasized, emphasized that enough. Now, in Ephesians, it actually talks about delegated authority. I believe demons have ranks and power. Principalities, possibly, could be what we compare to uh, what Michael fought in the book of Daniel when he said, I would have been there earlier and answered your prayer, Daniel, but I was fighting the prince of Persia. Now Michael says, now i got to go fight the prince of Greece. <laughs> so, I mean, if we could only see in the heavenlies what's really going on, we could probably be a little amazed. It'd probably make Star Wars and some of these things look pretty real. <laughs> and some of these video games, you know, they, in fact, I think video games, one of the real disadvantage of video games today is I think they overemphasize the power of demons and, and, and Satan. I think they put such a quickening in the minds of these children and, and they see these horrid creatures and they actually give place to these demons because, see, demons are deceivers. They're liars. They'll tell you something that's not true and, and try to make you believe they have more power than they have. Like I said, they don't have the power of slime if you don't give them a place to possess. They're no different than a fly on the wall. And I'm not, that's why I don't have fear in my life. I'm not afraid of demons. We've dealt a lot with them over the years. Now, people that get possessed sometimes can act a little weird, for sure. <laughs> but we have principalities, and then we have powers. These are demons of lesser degree. They could be general compared to generals. Um, and then we have captains. Well, generals would be like the regional principalities. Captains would be like the lesser, and then lieutenants and soldiers. We understand rank and armies. And I believe that's kind of what happens in the demonic realms, is there are levels of authority. Seems to indicate levels of power there in Ephesians chapter 6. Why is this important? Well, I, I personally believe, and I say that because I can't really prove this, but I believe that principalities and powers over regions get their authority by the activity of what's going on in that city. They, they observe. I believe these demons observe men, and where they see a particular activity, they get a stronghold. And eventually that stronghold causes a mindset in the area. I believe one of the strongholds over Tampa Bay is the spirit of lust. Of all the cities in America, we have a lot of strip joints and you know there's slave trade here, white slave trade, black slave trade from other countries. There, I mean, there are things going on, Filipino girls brought in. Tampa is known for these things. How did that stronghold come? I don't know. Over the years, people gave into that and then the demonic strongholds and principalities became evident here. And that's why, you know, you got to really sometimes battle these things. You say, can you remove them over areas? I really question that. I think the only way to remove them is to bring the people in that area to repentance under the rulership of Jesus. And when their heart changes, you know what? Those principalities will leave. When they see they have no more authority in the area, they're going to take off somewhere. They're going to say, hey, you know, this city is revived. They came to Jesus. They're, we're not welcome here anymore. So I believe those strongholds over that area are broken. I don't think we can break strongholds. Now, we did some of that in Seattle. I mean, I didn't know any better. I, I was kind of following some of the things happening in charismatic circles at the time. And we went on the high places of Seattle and we commanded strongholds over the city to be bound. And uh, we probably made a lot of noise in the heavenlies, but I don't know that Seattle changed a whole lot after that. But, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm still open on this. This is kind of an open subject to me. Whether we have rights to pull down strongholds over areas, I don't know. Because if the activity... See, it's the same thing that happens over a city that happens with an individual. And Jesus mentioned it here. He says, if a man gets cleansed 
His house gets swept clean, but nothing fills that house. He goes out cleansed, cleansed by the faith of those that de de delivered him. And it says he gets seven more demons stronger than those the first. And his latter end is worse than the beginning. So again, without the change of hearts of men coming under the rulership of Jesus and under the blood of Christ, without that change happening on earth, I really don't believe we can see strongholds broken over areas. So I, I, I'm just giving you what I see as, as the reality. Hi, Bill, Linda, how are you today? So, uh, but we must have, now, how, how do we destroy their influence? How do I destroy demonic influence in my life, in my family, and in my home? By right thinking. By right thinking. Um, you know, I'm telling you, if you don't have right thinking, if you don't bring every thought into captivity to Christ, where does Satan work? He works in the mind. He puts thoughts. I believe these demons can ride on our shoulder. If we saw them, they're probably small. They'll ride on our shoulder and whisper in our ear. You know, they'll try to convince us that uh, God isn't true, that the Word of God isn't going to work. You better have fear. Get a little sickness or something, a little thing appears on your skin. You think you're getting cancer, and then right away you get into fear, and, and this, is, this is how it works. Then you get into fear, and then you start speaking. I got cancer. Now you're confessing what you think you might have. Now you're releasing the power of words over it. And I'm, I'm telling you what a lot of people do. They right away, you know, start talking, doubt and, and unbelief, giving that demonic stronghold in their home more power. It empowers demons to confess the wrong thing. Give no place to the devil. So I tell you, the words of our mouth have to be acceptable in God's sight, every word. That's why Jesus said he's going to judge every word that comes. By your words, you'll be condemned or by your words, you'll be justified. Every idle word. So, I mean, the words we speak around our home and our family are so important. I, nothing has become more real in my life this year than, than that revelation the Lord gave me for this year, the creative power of your words. I taught on it last week, but it deals with demonic stuff in the home. I don't want to be too close to home, but... My daughter was going down the street with a little Christian girl, and I don't know what goes on in their home, but they were playing zombie games, you know, with zombies. You know, it's a, it's a kill the zombies thing, which, you know. And uh, I put her to bed at night, and she says, Dad, she says, I really had a dream last night. She says, these zombies were attacking me. And she says, I actually thought if I woke up, I'd die. I said, man, I said, what kind of message are you getting, you know? And so I said, I said, you know, Isabella, the way to get rid of this is, is repent. I said, don't go back and play that video game anymore. She thought it was so much fun, you know, they were killing the zombies. And I'm telling you, this, this is how these strongholds come. And she was having nightmares for two nights because of it. So uh, I said, let's repent. Yeah. And repentance means you change your mind, that's all. You're not going to go back and do that. And you're going to ask Jesus to wash you clean from doing it in the first place. I laid hands on her, on her head. We commanded, she, uh, we, she said, Dad, get the oil. So we anointed her room with oil, every uh, doorpost. And you say, well, this is... Hocus spoke. No, it's not. And we pled the blood of Christ and we assigned angels around her bed. I mean, you know, let's do what we know how to do. If God shows us more to do, we'll do that. So right thinking. we got to have right thinking. Align our thoughts with the mind of Christ. Jesus didn't disregard demons. He didn't say they didn't exist. He dealt head on with them. Commanded them. He spoke to them. And by the way, that's, you've got to speak to them. We're going to see that in a few moments. And then on the cross, he utterly defeated Satan. We are not fighting for victory, and you've heard this before. We're fighting from victory. <laughs> the victory has already been won. All we have to do is apply it by faith. Now, we're going to tie this into business in a few min minutes. Not only right thinking, but right living. You go on pornography online, you don't think these demons are watching? Come on, you're opening a door. You know, I mean, the things we do and the things... By the way, they watch what we say. They hear what we say. I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to give any advantage to the enemy in any way. I don't want that fly on the wall become, to become something bigger than that. And so uh, we're walking daily, by the way, in the righteousness of Christ. Declare it. When you get attacked with doubt, 
with the lies of the enemy, say, hey, wait a minute. I'm under the blood of Jesus. You have no right or authority to speak into my mind. I reject you. I rebuke you. The blood of Jesus against you. Get lost. And fly, flies can be annoying. <laughs> Had one fly up my nose yesterday. <laughs> I had to close the back door. We let our little puppy out, you know, to go to the bathroom. This, some flies came in, you know. Boy, they, that's like demons. They can be annoying. They're, you know, they may be powerless when you apply the blood. But they don't but, <laughs> land on hot stoves. They don't land on hot stoves. So they won't, la okay. <laughs> There's, going with that. I know where you're going with that. <laughs> so right living, walking daily in the righteousness of Christ totally removes demonic strongholds. And then right declaring. I am a child of God. I am free from the power of the enemy. You have no right. That's what I told those demons attacking my kids. You have no right or authority. See, our children get exposed to stuff in school. They get exposed on the bus to things. They get exposed to language. They get exposed to a lot more than I did when I was a kid. I'm telling you, when I was in school a few years back. Kids are blasted today by stuff. And even in school sometimes, some of the things being taught. And, uh, you know, and, and even in Christian schools, it doesn't exempt them from kids that, you know, it, it's, it's the same. They're in the same battle. So I'm teaching my children how to do spiritual warfare. They know now how to rebuke the enemy. They know how to confess their healing. They know how to receive it. I tell you, the flu isn't coming nigh our door in Jesus' name. I don't care what kind of exposure we've had. Oh, they say eight hours it'll hang around. Not hanging around my door. Anything in my door is covered by the blood of Jesus. And those germs die the minute they hit my door. Amen. Because it's not my door. It's the Lord's door. Amen, Bill? Come on. Yeah. Yes, you look good. Your wife's yeah, and my wife's cooking. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Now, we got to tie this together. All right. Okay, I'm going to show you how to get rid of demons in your business, all right? I'm going to show you how to get rid of them in your home. I'm going to show you how to get, get rid of them in your life, all right? If you don't know two principles, and I'm telling you, the Lord's taught us this by being on the streets for all these years. It's really simple. I think deliverance gets way carried away. When I first became baptized in the Holy Spirit years ago, we used to do eight-hour deliverances. Oh! I mean, we were chasing demons around the house, and they were chasing us. You know what I mean? It was wild and crazy, Bill. <laughs> I mean, some things we did, we just didn't know any better. You know, we, we were aware that now that we were baptized in the Holy Spirit, we had authority. We just had no training on how to use it. And I'm telling you, over 25 years of street ministry and dealing head-on with a lot of demon-possessed people, I've learned how simple this really is. Yeah. Here are the two principles of demonic stronghold and deliverance. And what used to take, I thought, hours can be done in minutes. Here it is. Demons are territorial. They're territorial. I said it at the beginning of the study. Uh, you know, if you work in a business that's not a Christian business, you know, and you walk in all singing in the spirit and everything, and I've mentioned this before in these studies, I'll just mention it again. Here it is. You walk in all joyful. You listen to worship all the way to work. You know what you do? The minute you walk into that business, you disturb every demon that's in that building. The presence of the Lord in you activates demons. Do you understand what I'm saying? You might be going in the grocery line at the store. I was standing at the grocery line one day. Some guy from New York. I think there are a lot of weird demons up in New York. He, and, and somebody had given me a coupon. I just came to Florida. This is my first day in Florida. Somebody gave me a free coupon to spend at that door. And, uh, at that store. And, and I'm standing in this line. And this guy from New York. What are you doing up there? We don't cash checks here. I said, sir, this is a coupon. I just moved to Florida. Thank you. You know, I'm just cashing my coupon, you know. You know the demon inside him got all angry because it was holding him up just one minute. That's to, to, better than I had. She started crawling. <laughs> so you don't know what you're next to. I mean, I'm just telling you, some people live with total control of demons over their lives, minds, bodies, tongues, all the time. So when you take the presence of the Lord in that, I was in a, I, I saw a meeting one time with Reinhard Bunke, and he got up, and boy, the worship was powerful, and, and he got up to speak, and he started quoting scripture, and I mean demons started screaming out all over that Colosseum. They were coming out of people, just, just the presence of the Lord in that place. So understand now, demons get tormented from the presence of God. You just got to accept that. And so if you work in a place where it's demonically influenced and there's lust going on and people are sleeping with each other and there's lying and deceit, all kinds of things. Now remember, the presence of the Lord is going to, you may not be liked. 
<laughs> as much as Jesus wasn't liked, you yeah. know what I mean? Just, then they don't know why they don't like you. They just don't like the, it's the spirit behind you they don't like, which is the presence of the Lord. Demons get upset. Now it's exactly the opposite. You've got to discern the spirit behind people. When you're working in business with people, you need to discern the spirit on which they're operating, behind which they're operating. Because if they're not born again, more than likely, there are influences of demonic stuff going on in their life, spirits behind them, and you need to bind that spirit behind them. Maybe not, the, you know, the person may just be a victim of having walked with this demon for so long. Yes. They're friends, you know. They don't realize. And so, demons are territorial, number one. Number two, they operate by permission. Yes. Every demon that's manifesting in a body, in a home, in an animal, somebody mm -hmm. has given permission for that demon to be there. Yeah. How do we get rid of demons? This is so easy. All right. <laughs> Oh, you take away their territory, watch this. You take away their territory by bringing it under the rulership and lordship of Christ. It's authority. The moment somebody comes under Jesus' rulership or authority, the demon has lost its strength. Can't abide there any longer. Now, it may hang around. And that's why I believe the second thing is really important. You remove permission by command. Jesus never one time mentally dealt with demons. He commanded them. He spoke to them. I speak all the time when I sense a spirit's behind something that's coming into my home. I speak to it in the name of Jesus. I say, spirit of, and I name it, I say, get out of here. I see you trying to manifest in my family. I reject and I refuse your authority here. You have no right in this home. And Mary Ann and I have gone repeatedly around and anointed our house. Amen? Yep. Take some oil. Anoint your business. If you don't have some good oil, get some good anointing oil. Go down and buy any oil. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend car oil. It's a little greasy, but, uh, you know, olive oil, just go to the grocery store for a couple of bucks. You can get a huge thing of, of, of olive oil, and that'll be enough to anoint all your workers and maybe all your equipment. I tell you, I've been a battle zone with my computers the last few weeks. I'm telling you. I don't scream at my computer and get upset. I anoint it. I... The other morning I got up and both of them quit on a radio station for no reason. And they wouldn't restart. Something happened during the night. I have no idea what it was. You say, well, can... You're, you're a little weird, Jerry. Well, all I know is I took my computer and I commanded it. I tried to start it three times. It wasn't working. I said, in the name of Jesus, I said, you come into alignment with the Word of God. I said, any strongholds over this commuter, computer are broken. Because computers, by the way, can be an entry point of the enemy in your home if you're not there. Oh, yeah. And so I took authority, and you know what? It started. Yeah. Just like that. And I went to KBBN one, the same one. Way, and it, it, both computers are working fine now. I anointed a cell phone once. I threw it into the water. <laughs> <laughs> you anointed it. Sure you drowned it with oil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, uh, let me just give, uh, I got one minute left here. What are some practical things we can do in our business, all right? We can cleanse it just by walking through it and declaring we can cleanse it. Just, you can anoint it with oil. Dedicated. You can dedicate it. Uh, you can declare the name of Jesus over it. Uh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Not just, it's not, speaking the name of Jesus cannot have an effect as well as have an effect. To me, when I say Jesus, it releases my faith and authority. Amen. Just because the name Jesus is on something doesn't mean it's biblical or whatever. But, it, you know, if, if you take that authority and the name of Jesus and speak it, and especially in agreement with somebody, you have power to bind That's right. and to loose. And then worship and praise music. I don't know about you, but I like worship and praise around my house. It creates an atmosphere of God's presence. And memorizing scripture. Get it inside of you. You can't go and look up a verse if you're getting attacked. You should have it on the edge of your mouth and speak that verse. Jesus three times says, it is written. And then the power of agreement prayer. Call somebody up saying, you know, I'm under attack right now, Merritt. Would you just agree with me? And there's such power in that agreement. So some practical things. We may teach again next week on, but these are tools. You say tools for my business? Absolutely. Listen, if you're not aware that your business is a place of spiritual warfare and that the enemy would like to shut you down and bring a spirit of poverty over you and a spirit of unbelief and a spirit of quitting and a spirit of failure, 
You don't know what's going on. And if kingdom businesses this year are going to prosper, we need to know how to apply some of these principles I've talked about today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that the kingdom businesses that are associated with watching this video right now or watching live on the internet or those here in this room, we command that in the name of Jesus, the enemy has no right or authority or power. We use the power of agreement against the enemy and say you are bound. You have no right or authority to attack us physically, no spirits of infirmity, mentally, no spirits of doubt and discouragement and, and self-rejection. Lord, we are loved by you. We are under your favor. We declare your favor and your prosperity on our business. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you that Jesus Christ has defeated the enemy once and for all. He said, it is finished. Now let us apply that in Jesus' name. Amen.